All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everyone. At this point, um, we are going to record this particular webinar. Um, but we would like to go ahead and take a moment to welcome everyone to the 2022 Grossmont Union High School District Career Technical Education Parent Education Night, Engagement Night. My name is Artie Riego. Thank you for joining us tonight. It is great to see many parents and students here tonight. Um, I'm the work-based learning specialist, Artie Riego for Grossmont Union High School District. I'll be your MC this evening. I would like to start by, by introducing Charlene Alspaugh. So if you could all please be patient and uh, for just a couple minutes while we have the interpreters announce these housekeeping items in Spanish and then Arabic. Thank you, Artie. Tonight's presentation will be in English. We do have Spanish and Arabic interpreters here tonight. If you would like to join the Spanish or Arabic interpretation, please click on the globe called interpretation in your control bar and select the language. For tonight's event, we have disabled the chat feature. If you would like to, to ask questions, please use the key Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We'd, we will do our best to answer all of your questions. And now an opening remark from Director of College and Career Readiness, Dr. Paul Dutremont. Thanks, Charlene. Uh, welcome everybody. My name is Paul Dutremont. I'm the Director of College and Career Readiness here in the Grossmont Union High School District. Um, I'm going to take just a moment to tell you a little bit about uh, career technical education in the Grossmont Union High School District. Um, we have pathways at all of our nine comprehensive high schools and at our alternative school of choice, Idea Center. Um, the Grossmont Union High School District has had uh, ROP and career technical education programs going back over 50 years. Um, it's something that our district is particularly proud of. Um, for, for the size of our district, you know, we have probably the largest career technical education programs covering 12 industry sectors and 40 different pathways, and it, it runs the gamut. You know, we have culinary, we have um, ag programs, we have engineering programs, you know, we have automotive programs. It, it really, it really runs the gamut. Um, you know, and we're going to be sharing a little bit of information with you tonight um, about, you know, a couple of, uh, of our programs a little more specifically. Um, you know, we've been offering these parent engagement nights now. I think this is about the third year in a row. Um, it's obviously something that I think schools and particularly high schools are always working hard to do, and that is to try to get communication, get information out to, to our community and to our parents. And what we have found is that the use of video conferencing, you know, in this instance, we're using a Zoom webinar has really helped us to expand that reach and get out to more of our families, more of our community members um, with the information that, you know, we're gonna be providing you here tonight. Um, I, I wanna thank everybody who's helped make uh, tonight come together, you know, the college and career readiness team and, you know, the members of other departments here in the Ed Services Department, it's, it really is a, a team effort to, to put something like this together. Um, I certainly wanna thank our industry panelists. You know, you will, you will really probably be the, you know, the, the highlight of the evening. So we really appreciate, you know, your time and the expertise you're gonna be bringing. Um, Grossmont Adult Education, who um, also has career technical education programs for um, serving mostly adults and also uh, Grossmont and Cuyamaca Colleges um, who, who have partnered with us on these um, parent engagement nights going back several years. And then most of all, I wanna thank all of the attendees. You know, um, I know everybody who's here to get this information is taking time out of their, their lives, um, you know, their busy lives. And we really appreciate you joining us tonight to learn more about career technical education. So again, thank you for being here tonight. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Riego. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Um, so 
Tonight is a kickoff event for the Gross Mountain Union High School District College. Este es el lanzamiento de la noche de uh, el Gross Mountain Union High School District College. This is the first of the first events throughout the year. Esperamos que uh, sea we'll este el primero de muchos eventos que tendremos este año. Tendremos este año. For your students. Um, you will have the opportunity to hear from Tendrán industry experts. Tendrán la oportunidad de escuchar acerca de expertos de la industria. Path. Y hacer preguntas acerca de la trayectoria académica, requisitos y intereses eh, laborales. Este, este and también San Diego está East promocionado por la colaboración de los colegios de condados de San Diego e Imperia y el Consejo de Desarrollo Económico del Este de los de condados de San Diego. Para la próxima parte de la próxima parte de la presentación le presento a Aileen Bagrizo, directora de preparación para educación superior universitaria de Grossman. And we can hear the Spanish translation and the English at the same time. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I don't know what is the problem. Um, is there something that I should be doing? Disconnect from somehow? If you can, um, right down at the bottom where the globe, the interpretation globe is, um, switch over to Spanish. Okay, one minute, please. No problem. I'm sorry, I cannot find the... Matt, is there a way for you to switch someone manually? Okay, I see the. Okay, I see Spanish. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, thank you for taking care of that and thank you all. Um, welcome to the Grossmont Union High School District College and Career Education Night. My name is Eileen Bag Rizzo and I'm one of the directors of College and Career Readiness for the Grossmont District. It's my pleasure to share with you information regarding the Grossmont Union High School District through technical education pathways. The Grossmont District has three core values. We are caring, innovative, and collaborative. All these values are represented in our pathway programs throughout the Grossmont family of schools. To give a little background on the career technical education programs in the Grossmont Union High School District, we have 44 career pathways representing 12 of the industry sectors identified by the state of California. The icons on the slide represent the industry sectors and the high schools that offer the pathways in each of the 12 sectors. Our pathways include a two or three year course sequence in which industry skills are developed over the course of the pathway. Our pathway classes are rigorous. 40 of the 70 classes meet the minimum requirements of the UC CSU admission guidelines. In addition, 21 of our pathway courses receive early college credit at Grossmont and Cuyamaca College. Throughout our pathways, we embed work-based learning activities such as guest speakers, industry tours, job shadows, mentorship from our industry advisors, and field trips, which help prepare our students for the opportunities after high school. Our goal for the CTE pathways is to create a pipeline between high school, college, and the workforce. Tonight, you'll hear more about that pipeline. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Don Quizon. Hi. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about a college career planning tool that um, all of our sites are starting to use called Zello. Um, as a parent or guardian, you should be receiving um, access to this um, portal for your students soon. Um, every school site has a determined uh, date um, that they're going to um, notify you of this. So be looking out for that in your email. Um, what you'll be able to see is there's some screenshots that you um, I want to point out here, but um, as a ninth grader, a 10th grader, 11th grader, or 12th grader, there are different lesson plans for every grade level. Um, uh, our ninth graders, we start with some exploration tools um, to look for career matches, um, learning styles, 
and personality styles. Um, from there, as they go on to 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, uh, they explore different tools in here, including matching schools, looking at majors, um, and other types of requirements that different careers might uh, require them. Um, and they're able to save all of this information in this portal. And as a parent, you're going to be able to access your student's portal and see what um, they've explored and what they've saved to their profile. Um, there's some other tools on here that students can um, voluntarily use as well, including a resume builder um, and college checklist when they're a senior. This is just an example of the types of questions and how it looks to students. Um, so they're pretty easy to go through for the students um, and it's very user friendly. A lot of times they'll ask the same question in multiple ways. Um, so they really do try to find um, where that student's interests lie uh, to try to come up with a, you know, the, maybe the best idea um, for career matches that they can find. In the end, um, this is what a little bit of a, what the, it's hard to get the whole screen on here, but it will list um, based on the results of the survey for the students then it will list the names of different careers. The kids can click on the career and explore more about what that student might need as far as post-secondary education um, to be able to obtain that career. And if you have any questions about Zello, um, you can contact your school's counseling department. Awesome, thank you so much, Don. Uh, now we would like to welcome James Sly, who is a president and chief executive officer of the East County Economic Development Council. We would like to thank James for moderating our panel of industry professionals this evening. We have prepared some questions for the panelists to answer. In a bit, the audience will have a chance to answer their questions in the Q&A window, and we will get to as many questions as we can. James Sly is the president and chief executive officer of the East County Economic Development Council. Mr. Sly is responsible for defining and implementing the East County EDC's ambitious project portfolio, which cuts across education, industry, workforce, and government. Additionally, Mr. Sly leads many of the organization's strategic partnership and business development efforts, working to make EDC a locus of econ economic activity in San Diego. Mr. Sly joined the East County EDC in 2012, Initially as a program manager tasked with helping the Department of Defense and Defense Logistics Agency fine tune their per, uh, procurement systems to make government solicitations more attractive to American manufacturers. After leading the development of a new supply, uh, supply chain software solution, he expanded his attention to include the EDC's other flagship projects, Aerotropolis, the Advanced Manufacturing Workforce Pipeline, and the Connect, uh, Connectory SAS program. Prior to joining the East County EDC, Mr. Sly worked as a management consultant, servicing startup and mid-sized businesses throughout San Diego's private sector, and a sought after workforce er uh, expert for One Stop Career Center Network and San Diego CalWORKs Welfare to work in uh, refugee resettlement programs. He has been able to leverage this multifaceted skill set to EDC's benefit, coordinating resources from across the spectrum to drive the organization's mission and support stakeholders throughout East County and the larger San Diego region. James Sly was born and raised in San Diego, California. He has a bachelor's degree in business management from San Diego State University and a Lean Six Sigma Black Belt certification from the University of California, San Diego. Let's give a warm welcome to James Sly. Uh, thank you, Artie. Uh, thanks for allowing me to join you tonight and for that detailed introduction. Uh, now I'd like to ask each panelist to introduce yourself when your slide is up on the screen. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into your current position, and then we'll get started with some prepared questions. Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, having me tonight as a panelist. Um, I'm very excited to, to be here and, and present to you guys. My name is Rachel Gonzalez. I'm a director of business development and marketing for a general contractor. I'm also a co-founder of EC Squared, which educates uh, individuals on the many career opportunities there are in the construction industry. 
I am uh, a perfect example of a, a, a career that you would not anticipate to be within the industry. I actually was a merchandise marketing major and worked my way into construction. And now, like I said, I'm director of marketing and business development for a, a large general contractor here in San Diego. How y'all doing? I'm Peter Bazina. Nice to meet y'all. Um, I am a program manager, manager at Otterbox, Otter Products. We make cell phone cases, all of these things, things that protect your phone when you drop it or when your kids drop it. I also had a non-traditional path. I was a mechanical engineer from Georgia Tech, master's at UC Santa Barbara, and was an engineer for about 15 years in San Diego, multiple companies, Qualcomm, Solar Turbines, Delta Design as a mechanical engineer, loved it. And at a certain point, I saw somebody who was a program manager and I said, I wanna do that. So I pushed for it, I led projects and I was able to be, become a program manager. And then I was, did that for about six years and now I've become a manager of the program managers. And we make many things at Otterbox from tablet cases, cell phone cases, power products, cables, uh, wall chargers, you name it. That's it for me. Hello, everyone. My name is Paul Nevs. I'm the director of clinical informatics at Sharp Grossmont Hospital. I worked for Sharp Healthcare for the past 21 years. Um, I had a very non-traditional um, entry into healthcare, mostly because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I was in high school. And as I got out of high school, I worked some odd jobs and knew that I wanted to get into healthcare, but didn't really know how to do it. Um, I uh, joined the U.S. Navy to earn money for college and see the world and, and did all that. And then when I got out, I went to Grossmont Community College and earned my associate's degree of science in nursing. Um, I started working as a bedside nurse and then from there, I knew I really wanted to work in leadership and wanted to pursue advanced education. So I obtained my bachelor's degree uh, in nursing and my master's degree in nursing and nursing leadership. So uh, my route, um, you know, has been full circle. I took advantage of a great local community edu college education. Um, which was great foundation for my career. Um, and I found that uh, there are many, many opportunities um, uh, if you just uh, kind of, you know, work to figure out what you want and, and go for it. So in my current role as director of clinical informatics, my job is to help facilitate the integration of technology in the business and clinical operations at, in the healthcare setting, which as you could imagine, uh, healthcare is becoming very, very technically complex. So it keeps me busy, but uh, I love supporting all of our um, operations, business and clinical operations leaders and teams and providing outstanding uh, high quality healthcare at Sharp. Looking forward to the uh, rest of the presentation. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon, Patrick McGarry. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more of a unique career path, I think, than a lot of people here. I started IT right out of high school. Um, I had a buddy of mine who, uh, out of high school, had suggested I go work for a IT service provider called Icon Office Solutions and uh, started doing uh, technical certifications and found a great career. And I've been doing it now for over 20 years. And I love it. I love anything technology. And uh, I think uh, it's a great career path for anyone who's really into computers, computer science, or cybersecurity. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your introductions. And we'll move on to the prepared questions. So uh, we already answered kind of you know a little bit about yourself and how you got into your position. So why don't we start with uh, Rachel? We'll ask you first. What basic education, skills, certifications, or soft skills does a person need to start a career in your industry? Well, I'm going to touch on the industry as a whole first. Um, my role with EC Squared is to educate individuals on the many opportunities and the different roles uh, there are within construction. And a lot of them people don't necessarily realize. Um, but again, if you were wanting to get into the industry um, at entry level, 
uh, most people associate trades uh, with that. Obviously, there's apprenticeships and those types of things. If you wanted to get into a more professional level within the industry, remember there's all kinds of opportunities as far as uh, what it takes to run a construction business. It's like any other business. There's legal aspects, there's HR aspects, there's accounting aspects. And of course, like me, there's marketing aspects. Um, it, talking about the marketing side of things and uh, what makes my story a little bit different, like I told you all, I'm a merchandise marketing major. Uh, I went to FITM which is the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. So when I tell people that story and they go, and what do you do again? Uh, they kind of laugh, but those marketing skills obviously translate into a, a career in the industry. Um, and, and that's what a lot of people don't realize. So as far as marketing goes, obviously you need to have some sort of background in graphic design, presentation, marketing degree, preferably, um, those types of things. But again, if you're getting into the construction industry, knowledge of the industry is valuable, whatever position you're looking for. So there are so many opportunities from ground up, whether you're college bound, you're, you want to do an apprenticeship, you want a training program, there are so many options within the industry that will help you achieve whatever it is that that goal is for you. It's, it's really interesting to me that it seems like from everyone's introductions, it sounds like everyone's had sort of a different path into their industry. I think all of you called that out in your introductions. And so uh, it's just, it's fascinating to hear how, you know, your background, Rachel, led you to, you know, to an experience in construction. So I'm sure we'll hear other stories as we go through this. Uh, Peter, why don't we start going next to you? What basic education, certification, soft skills does a person need to start a career in your industry? Well, for engineering, it's pretty straightforward. You, you want to figure out what kind of engineering you want to do when you go to college, do it. Uh, for program management, however, it can start anywhere. Um, well, pro what is program management? You're basically running projects. You're working with teams. Uh, you have to learn how to lead by gui guiding by influence, uh, not direct authority. So working those key teams is critical. Uh, you don't have to have a very deep understanding of any particular <clears throat> aspect of what you're, what you're trying to take across the line. Like one of these cell phone cases, it takes a lot of different people to make something like this. Um, but you are the facilitator and the glue. So if you're a big a person that really enjoys teamwork, working across different cross-functional functions, program management is definitely for you. And there is a certification called program management professional that uh, some, most of your companies that you work for will sponsor that. And it's a certification that says that's the industry standard for program managers. That's it. Yeah, great. Paul, any, any education skills, soft skills you'd want to call out? Sure. Hey, can you hear me all right? I'm having technical difficulty. I want to make sure you can hear me. Sound great. All right, wonderful. Um, you know, it's interesting. Um, if you know you want to be a nurse, a doctor, a pharmacist, an engineer, et cetera, then obviously your education path will take you there. But if you're unsure exactly what you might want to do in uh, healthcare, it's really uh, very good for you to know that there are many entry level jobs in, in the healthcare setting. At Sharp Grossman Hospital, for instance, there's many entry level jobs, diploma or de uh, degree is all you need. And then you can get your foot in the door and get started in jobs and kind of figure out exactly what it is that you want to do in that setting. So uh, that's really helpful. Um, if you're thinking, I want to be clinical, but I'm not sure what I want to do, then, you know, you can do jobs through, uh, um, you know, in nursing assistant, a medical assistant, those kind of things. So any of those uh, um, kind of preparations will get you there, um, but uh, you certainly don't need to have figured it out to get into the healthcare setting. You can just get in um, entry level jobs. There's lots of them, um, and, and then you can find your way. And we we know we see a lot of people that do that. It, and I I think Paul, you made a great point that the healthcare industry sometimes can be a little ambiguous, right? If you don't want to be a doctor or a nurse, what other jobs are there for you in a hospital or in a healthcare setting? And I know that what we found in our work at the EDC is that there are thousands of jobs in healthcare and hospitals and uh, local clinics that it really, there's a job for everyone, it seems like, but um, it, again, hopefully they'll be able to experience some of that by, uh, you know, work-based learning internships, things like that. Absolutely. Uh, we are like a little city at a large hospital, like the Sharp Crosswalk Hospital. So you name it, uh, we have it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Patrick? Well, obviously you have to love 
working on a computer. Um, most people who go in IT are people who are very comfortable sitting on the computer for a long period of time. Um, a lot of kids these days love playing, you know, video games on their computer, doing social media, and they get kind of interested to the technology that's the backbone of that. Um, IT has a, a seat in every single industry, in every single business, in every single government. So there are uh, just an ever-growing number of IT positions. And the career path is a lot more expansive than most people realize. A lot of people go into IT, they think IT is you are fixing computers. And really, that's just IT level one. Um, it's such a small entry point. Um, sure, there's people in IT who fix computers, but there are people who do software programming. Um, there are people who just do cybersecurity. There are people who are what we call ethical hackers who actually get paid to hack. Um, and then there's the other side. There's the business side of IT. Uh, I'm an IT consultant. So my job is to go out and meet with city governments, enterprise businesses, business owners, and tell them and give them counsel on how to make their IT safer, more robust, more efficient. And those career paths are really just expansive. And it just depends on how much someone wants to dive into their career. Um, it really starts with some basic certifications, which can be done at any time, even while in high school. Um, really start by going into CompTIA, um, looking at some of the different IT frameworks. Uh, ITIL is a great one if you want to be an IT executive. Um, if you want to be someone who's really into um, cybersecurity, there's a long list of cybersecurity paths paths both in college and, and in the online accreditation path. But, you know, really, there are jobs right now open that are dying for people to take, you know, step up and take those roles. And anyone who can take six months to a year of accreditation learning online can start an IT career right away. And I mean, just in the East County here, I'm also a member of uh, James East County Economic Development Council. We have IT positions all over East County, whether it's at the local casinos, whether it's at the local government offices. I know City of El Cajon is looking for some new IT people. So there are all these positions available and so really it just takes a little bit of you know reaching out and, and going online and looking at um, CompTIA is a really great place to start and going what are my what are my fundamental accreditations and then if you want to get into it you can go into Microsoft and get accredited you can get Cisco accredited and you can build and the more technical certifications anyone in IT has the more value they bring and the better income that they can earn. And so it's really quite an exciting field and one that's just in an ever growing demand. Um, something I think that everyone who graduates now will really be confronted with is the opportunity to go into cybersecurity because right now there is a huge demand for anyone who wants to learn cybersecurity and help in that regard. And I think there isn't a, a, a school district or a city or a government or, or any business in all of East County that isn't looking for someone to help them with cybersecurity in some regard. So I think there's a lot there. And I, I think that uh, that's what's gotten me so excited about it as well. It's, I was laughing earlier with a friend that when I graduated from high school, the common thought was that um, don't bother going into computer science. They're going to over outsource those jobs. They're all going overseas, going to something that's right. more reliable like business or law. And, you know, jokes on me. Because obviously the jobs are hugely in demand. We talked to, like Patrick mentioned, we talked to tons of employers and everybody is always looking for IT professionals, cybersecurity experts. So definitely a lot of opportunities there. And I think that, uh, you know, kind of we, we touched on it with Paul when he was speaking about, you know, how internships and mentorships can better prepare you. And I think our next question is, uh, we'll start with Peter. What can a student do to be best prepared to enter your industry? And is it internships, mentorships? Uh, is it self-marketing through LinkedIn accounts? So for like engineering, um, take your science classes, um, participate in part of engineering clubs like robotics or drones, uh, participate in the fantastic, uh, formerly known as Sun Power Academy or other summer science related activities. Um, get an internship at a machine shop, um, go work at a circuit board shop, get something out there with your hands on it for engineering. Um, it The industry really values people that don't just go into the books, but somebody who also can get their hands dirty and build things. So I really recommend that for, for engineering. Uh, there's a ton of companies in East County that small businesses that could probably handle a summer internship for maybe a senior or something like that. I would definitely recommend it. Um, 
for program management um, as a, once you get into your career, once you start leading projects and leading other people indirectly, that's when you get, you get that experience. Um, there's no quote unquote degree in program management. Um, it's, it's hard to start out as a program manager. You go to college, you become that, you kind of have to have some experience in the field. Uh, so as for social media and social aspects of that, there's no real requirement. You don't have to go out and market yourself. You don't have to be an influencer. You just got to get to it, get your, your, your good grades for engineering and program management. Um, you can be in any part of the industry to start in program management from uh, marketing, business, supply chain, test, anywhere. I have people on my team that, that don't have college degrees and or even any college degrees, and they are very successful as program managers. Program managers run projects. You, you take something across the line, whether it's a project, a product, or a service. Um, and it also lends itself to just about every industry. They need, they need people that lead things, that lead projects, lead IT projects, or say you're building something for the defense industry here. Um, but social media doesn't play too big into it. LinkedIn is, is definitely a spot where you want to be part of. So polish up your LinkedIn account. Yeah. And I think yeah. it, you know, we, you heard from our education partners earlier that a lot of our high schools, a lot of our um, education facilities saw offer various work-based learning pathways, right? You saw them highlight them in a few slides ago, and many of them offer internship or mentorship opportunities. So I would encourage our attendees to take advantage of that where it's relevant. In my own experience, I think that team sports and coaching had a lot of transferable skills and carryover for things like program management. Um, you know, and so those are, those are the sorts of opportunities that perhaps you can start investing in now so that, you know, the first time you walk into an employer, it's not the first time you've managed people or worked as part of a team or interacted that way. But uh, Paul, we'll move on to you. What's, what can a student do to be best prepared to get into the healthcare industry? You bet. Great question. I think there's a lot of opportunities. I think the first thing to do is, you know, find organizations in your area that you're interested in. So in healthcare, you might be sharp healthcare. That'd be great. Um, look for um, community events that they're hosting and, and job fairs, virtual fairs, et cetera. You know, we just had a, um, a job fair for um, entry level um, health care assistance, like nursing assistant type job fairs. We're actively looking for people like a lot of uh, industries. We are uh, experiencing a shortage of workers. So so we certainly need the help. So I say that's important. I think you can go out and Google and look online and you can look for uh, content that's relevant to working in healthcare. And there's free certif uh, certifications and classes around you know, uh, protected health information and things like that, that you can do to show and put on your resume to boost your resume, to help you get your foot in the door, to show you're taking the initiative to wanting to learn more about working in the industry. Um, I think that's real important that you um, network, like you said, your social media, um, LinkedIn, et cetera, but don't be afraid to uh, contact community liaison uh, managers for organizations like Sharp Grossmont Hospital. We have a community liaison manager. Um, you can, it's really, if you do the work, it's quite easily, easy to find and network and connect with folks at the, at the uh, institutions like at Sharp Grossmont Hospital. I've been reached out to by many and uh, certainly do everything I can do to guide people and uh, mentor them. So mentoring, networking, um, taking initiative to look for opportunity to get free um, education and information that can help you uh, be a more attractive candidate. But um, there's a lot of uh, opportunities there that, to help you do that. And then lastly is, um, you know, uh, programs like this, the CCTE program is really, really important. And, and I know they have students that are uh, engaged in getting onto our campus at Sharp Grossman Hospital. So lots of avenues um, to get in. And, it, and healthcare has some really good trade periodicals too, don't they? A lot of, what is it, the American... American College of Healthcare Executives. I think they publish a magazine like every month that I know a lot of people in healthcare can review and just see case study upon case study of how hospitals are run and how healthcare decisions are made. And um, I, I thought they were really interesting. My fiance is in healthcare. She finds them fascinating. And uh, maybe that's another good opportunity, another relatively accessible resource people can use to learn more about how healthcare works. Absolutely. There's so much information out there and organizations willing to share. Yeah, I get those uh, mailers every month and I uh, peruse through them and get a lot of good information. But yeah, there's a lot of avenues to get and gain information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and like, like you heard Paul mention, they're in desperate need of, of good, high quality workers. So there are definitely some opportunities for people looking to enter the healthcare field. Uh, Patrick, best prepared to enter your industry? What can we do? What can the students do? 
Oh, there's so much. Um, there's so much high demand for people to go into IT right now that there's a long, long range of ways to get into IT. Um, I would highly recommend going into any of the IT, introduction to IT courses available at some of the community colleges at Grossmont, at Cuyamaca. State has some great programs as well. Um, but that's not the only avenue. There are, there's entire uh, catalogs of YouTube videos on introduction to IT. There's obviously accreditation online schools, including CompTIA. Um, and then um, once someone has some of the real entry level skill sets, there are internships everywhere. Um, there's internships um, with the local cities, their IT departments are looking to hire. Um, some of the local casino IT departments in, in the East County have an internship program in their IT to help them with some of their uh, basic IT needs. Um, internship is a great way to get hands-on experience. Um, beyond that, um, uh, if you really want to get into the engineering world and you want some entry-level experience, call the MSP. Uh, those are managed IT providers. There's about three dozen of them around San Diego County. Um, they're always looking for someone. Uh, many of them on the larger side are looking for interns to come in. They, you know, do some entry level troubleshooting, uh, over the call help. Um, you know, they'll even help with training. Uh, some of the MSPs in San Diego will actually pay for you to go get accreditation so that you can bring more valuable to the organization while you intern. So there's a really long, long path or a long avenue of, of ways to get into the uh, into the industry um it's remarkable um i don't know of any other industry that'll take you in in so many different ways because the demand is so much higher than the available talent we are importing talent from other countries um but there aren't enough countries in the world right now with <laughs> the amount of positions open so it's, it's really interesting um and i would say one of the big challenges in the IT industry is um, some of the countries that we're importing talent from are also some of the countries where a lot of the cyber criminals are also in. And that puts a lot of dilemma in the industry. Do you import people from countries where there are cyber criminals to do your work remotely from that country? And can you trust that that pool of talent will be um, uh, say it will be a safe source. And so the demand for local IT is so high that you can literally get into there with um, no experience, very little training and, and get into a, one of the many, many either training programs or internships across the board uh, and right away. I mean, literally right out of high school or right while you're doing um, classes in the colleges here. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and I, I want to call that out because I think that from an employer's perspective, Hiring people is really scary, right? Yes. You don't know if they're going to be able to do the job. You don't know if they're a good fit. And we've found in our organization that internships and mentorships, entry-level positions are great ways to source great candidates and move them up rapidly through the organization. I think that uh, the bulk of my project managers and a few of my directors started off as interns or as administrative assistants and just established themselves very quickly. Because once you take that ambiguity out through things like internships, you really get a feel for what the candidate presents. So uh, Rachel, what about you? What can a student do to be best prepared to enter your industry? So one thing to remember about the construction industry, which people don't always think about, is it it's never going anywhere. We're constantly busy. It never slows down. Um, we always need roads and bridges. We always need infrastructure. We always need schools. We always need office buildings. Uh, it, it's just an industry that is it's consistently thriving uh, during, you know, even during the pandemic, we were deemed essential because people wanted to maintain the buildings. They wanted to make sure we had infrastructure. Um, so those jobs are always there. Those opportunities are always there. Um, the upward mobility is pretty significant. Any aspect of the industry that you uh, choose to get into, that there is tremendous opportunity for upward mobility to make a great living, um, to support yourself, to support a family. Um, again, the industry is very vast. There are a lot of options um, for getting into the industry. If you wanted to go uh, trade options, you know, work in the field from ground up, there are apprenticeship programs. The great thing about the industry is apprenticeship programs, is, it's paid schooling. You earn while you learn. It's actually on the job training. 
Um, and so the, those opportunities are, are pretty amazing for individuals, especially younger individuals that may not be sure what direction they want to go. Um, if you're thinking about a professional level type opportunity or you're college bound, there are internships. Our industry internships are always paid. Uh, usually they're during the summer uh, when, when most individuals are, are, are not studying. Um, but those, those internships are there for project managers, project engineers, um, those types of positions. Other type of professional positions, obviously the internships are there on the legal side, HR side as well, accounting side, if those are your paths um, of study. The one thing I would say, if you are not college bound and you are not necessarily wanting to go to a trade school or you know, be in an apprenticeship program, be boots on the ground, entry level positions are great like I talked about upward mobility, that's the best way to get a grasp of the industry and to know uh, if this is somewhere you wanna be and to see what different aspects within the industry are interesting to you and what path you wanna go. The industry is very popular for training and uh, promoting from within. So those entry level positions are very important. Um, I can tell you a, a lot of project coordinators come in and they decide, oh my gosh, I, you know, I'm touching all of these pieces of paper and all of these things that have to do with all these different departments. And now I'm getting experience into what those individuals do. And I have a better idea of what I'd like to do. And a lot of those companies will put those individuals into a training type program to get them to move into those positions that interest them. So the opportunity is pretty vast. Um, I could probably go on for a while and talk about it, uh, but I would say do your research, look into um, different companies, different programs. There's a lot of training programs on our website, ec-2.org, that show you uh, the different aspects of the industry and, and where you can go to find information. Um, and I would say to just keep an open mind and figure out maybe if something interests you, there's an educational path that can get you into that spot. And I, I hope that the students and parents listening in to, to comments like Rachel's understand that there are a number of viable opportunities within these industries. And for a lot of these opportunities, oftentimes they'll pay you for training. And as someone who worked, you know, four years of retail while I was getting my bachelor's degree, while my friend was working four years as a welder and making double what I was during training and after, uh, these are very, very well-paying, self-sustaining jobs that I think are, are definite opportunities for, you know, the, the right candidate, the right fit. So, uh, Paul, we'll, we'll move to you for the next one for the what looks to the axe to grind question. Does social media matter when applying for a job? How students portray themselves on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, etc.? Uh, absolutely, James. Uh, social media uh, it does uh, absolutely matter. Um, I, I don't know anyone that, that's hiring it, that is not looking. You mentioned earlier about not knowing um, someone is the, the greatest risk in hiring, and we always want to get it right. Uh, we, you know, the best fit for your team and your department and your organization is more important than anything when hiring. And so uh, social media gives an insight into their personal world. And uh, so it's really, really important for folks to know that anything you put out there, anything and everything you put out there, um, it lives in uh, forever in one way or another. So just be mindful of that. Um, we all are, we're, you know, we're all real people, right? So we all understand people have personal lives, but um, you just got to be make sure, mindful and know that uh, my future employer um, may be, is very well looking at my, uh, my, what I'm posting. So keep that in mind, hundred percent. Patrick? Does our, does our social media matter when applying for a job? It can. Um, it certainly does if you go into the IT business consulting sales side. Um, I would say traditional IT engineers, uh, cybersecurity professionals really don't need to be on um, uh, social media. In fact, most IT cybersecurity engineers are not on social media because they understand the risks associated with social media. Um, social media is the gateway for cybersecurity criminals. And so if you are not in sales or networking and need to be on social, uh, social media, 
IT engineers tend to refrain from really being um, active. However, in my part of the business where I'm out there meeting with uh, IT leaders and, and business leaders and helping them network and, and find solutions and find professionals to help them address IT issues, um, LinkedIn specifically is crucial to my job because I need to be able to get a lot of information out to a large uh, uh, a pool of it of attendees who who are looking for uh, new risks that they're facing or um, potentially a new solution that's coming to market that might solve or address a specific risk. So it really depends on on how you take your IT path into the industry. Um, but when you want to go in traditional IT work, it's really just about learning the technology, um, getting the tests completed that val that that validate your understanding, and then getting out and getting some hands on work as soon as possible. Absolutely, yeah. Do uh, uh, Rachel any thoughts on the social media when applying for a job? Does it make a difference? Does it matter what I post on my Facebook or Instagram reel? Absolutely, obvious. Obviously, I'm I'm gonna say yes. I'm obviously <laughs> super popular. I don't know, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, social media, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to answer the question from two different aspects. First, as an employer, right, I'm looking into who I'm hiring and what they're posting and, and what kind of individual am I going to get uh, based on, you know, the stuff that they're, they're putting out to the world. Um, so just be really careful, I would say in that regard. Um, and on a marketing side of things, um, your social media says a lot about you. If I'm wanting to bring on a marketing coordinator or something like that, I'm, I'm obviously looking on, on how savvy you are and what you're doing, because that is a big part of our position as, um, marketing and business development, no matter what industry it's in. Right. Um, so I take it from two different aspects. I'm, I'm taking the question as, is it important how you present yourself globally? Yes, it is. Um, LinkedIn's a very big part of that, which I think everyone has said. Um, and then if you're wanting to get into a marketing career in, in construction or any other industry, I would say, obviously they're going to be looking at how you're presenting yourself. So make sure that you're, that you're cognizant of what you're what you're doing and how you're saying it. Got it. Yeah. Peter, what do you think? I think all y'all have said it already. You just don't post stupid stuff on your social media. Keep it clean. Keep it professional. Um, you know, post your family stuff, but employers do look at what your, what your public profile is and it, it can influence your hiring. So you got to be real careful because it's out there forever. It's really tough to clean your, uh, you know, even if you delete your Instagram posts or your Facebook stuff, some, somewhere, somehow it's archived on some cloud. So you got to be real careful. I'm thankful that I don't have, didn't have Instagram growing up. So it's already been said. <laughs> yeah. A lot of us have dodged that bullet. Yeah. Um, and just a reminder that if you are uh, listening in on this to please type your questions into the Q&A box as opposed to raising your hand or typing it in chat. Uh, we're, we're burning through those kind of in the middle of this presentation. But for our next question, I love this one. And this will go to Patrick first. Uh, what are some jobs within your industry that most people might not know about? We touched on this a little bit earlier, but. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think my favorite is ethical hacker, right? Um, people think of hackers and they think that there are some kid who's trying to break into a government program and, 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 you know, try to see if the, he can, uh, steal money from some online bank account or something crazy like you see in the movies. But really there is a huge job market for people who we want to, what we call, um, ethical hacking. And that is paid to try to hack. Um, this is actually extremely popular in the healthcare field. Um, certainly, I know Sharp has been known to hire these ethical hacker teams. Um, the, the, the real way it works is um, the, uh, any organization, uh, private or government, will say, okay, uh, we think we're safe. So um, hack us. Go ahead and try. We don't think you're going to get through. Um, and so they pay people. Um, there are a couple of different roles within that group. There is what's called um, a red team and a green team, believe it or not. 
Uh, one team will just try to do stuff like seeing whether or not something will go through your network. Can I just take stuff from you, basically? It's just an easy role. Um, it's fairly um, straightforward, right? I'm just going to see if something just it can physically be digitally stolen, stuff of that. The red team, that's an interesting job, and it's an ever-growing job field. And that is actually where you are paying someone to do whatever they can to break into your network and steal information. But not so that you get blackmailed, not so that you get some money out of it um, illegally, but to prove that it can be done so that whatever vulnerability you find can be then patched on the back end. Um, it's a fun career, especially for kids who love to get creative on computers, um, who don't want to go into software programming, who are looking for an IT career path. Um, it pays extremely well. Um, there are now master's degree programs in cybersecurity related to ethical hacking. But the great thing about ethical hacking is you just have to be creative. You have to be technical on understanding some basics of how a computer or a network works. And then you have to kind of understand, well, uh, I think I might be a hacker. Maybe I can get paid to do this. And that way I stay out of trouble <laughs> with the government and uh, I have a great career path. So that's, that's a really new, interesting one. I would say that there is a great and very growing need for IT executives such as myself. People think of IT, they really think of those engineer types who spend all day, you know, sitting on a computer and, and put a headset on like I'm wearing in this data center, like what's behind me. But there are a lot of people out there who are just meeting with IT managers and CIOs and, and government officials and, and networking them and, and connecting them with people. There are literally thousands of products on the market that are software or hardware or cybersecurity related, someone has to help those products find a home. And it's a great career path. You get into IT, you understand a little bit about what uh, infrastructure an IT has, what are the current roles, and then you can get into sales. And those careers all pay very, very well, are in high in demand. So um, I think that the the landscape of IT roles is ever changing as the needs are continuously growing. Um, IT budgets are when I started 20 years ago were 10 to 15 percent of any budget. And James, you know that that number has tripled, um, even quadrupled in some situations because everything touches the internet now. And so because of that, we've just created this huge landscape of new roles um, that are really interesting and very well paying. Yeah, thank you for that. And it, Rachel, we'll go to you next. What are some jobs within your industry that most people might not know about? Well, for the essence of time, you know, this is really open-ended in my industry. That There are several positions within the construction industry that people don't realize are there. Um, but I'll just touch on a couple uh, just so that we can, you know, get to everybody. Um, one thing that, you know, Patrick was just talking about was the IT portions. People don't realize, I mean, there is so, most of our uh, IT is all in-house. So those positions are are very much in demand in our industry. Um, I will tell you technology wise, and this is something interesting that I've gotten uh, to participate in over the last few months is um, drone, uh, drone technology. So we have, we hire within internally for these individuals to operate drones on so many levels. Um, they do building information modeling with those drones. They do, all kinds of research on different projects, different landmarks, different types of things to get us started on projects. So that's a whole nother uh, aspect of the industry that people don't always realize is there. Um, and then I'll use myself as a, an example because most people don't understand uh, the marketing role in construction. Uh, those projects have to come from somewhere. These companies these companies rely on individuals like myself to make sure that they're able to get new work and keep all of the other individuals within their company moving and growing and continuing. So, so the, the, those are three. Um, th there are several, like I said, but those are three that stick out in my mind the most. Patrick, quickly, what are some jobs within your industry that most people might not know about? I think I'm you sorry. already asked me that. I'm one. Sorry, I meant Peter. My apologies. <laughs> My exact job is something that I had no idea about. Um, program management. You're running projects, project management. It's not something you go to school for. Uh, you get certifications for post high school. 
um, it's a, it's a really great team building um, aspect. If that's something you really want to do and you really enjoy building teams, project management is for you. Got it. All right. And Paul, to, to round out this question, some jobs within your industry that most people might not know about. Sure. So in the healthcare setting, if you're not uh, putting your hands on or directly interacting with our patients, our customers, then your job is to support healthcare. And we have, like I said, we're, we're like a small city. So legal, marketing, IS, IT, food and nutrition services, chefs, um, engineers, maintenance workers, uh, paint, painters, you know, they got to paint, you know, paint the walls every day. Um, we, the list goes on and on and on. We have so many jobs in healthcare that aren't, um, that aren't directly touching the patient. So there's so many opportunities to, to get into an organization like Sharp um, and other healthcare organizations and make a difference in impacting the healthcare for, uh, for our, our uh, citizens, our community, but uh, not necessarily be the clinical hands-on person. So if, if you can dream it, it's probably there. Security, we have security officers, of course. So it, it's there and a lot of those are entry level. So there's many, many, many opportunities. Got it, thank you. And in the, in the interest of time, we have one last question. So we'll confine our answers to uh, just about two words. Does your industry see a growth in employment in the next five to 10 years? Let's hear a yes, a lot of growth, maybe not so much, or no, not at all. Rachel, why don't we start with you? Absolutely. It's continuously growing. Like I said, construction never stops. <laughs> Got it, Peter. Engineering, the technology on your phone, you can take this to the moon. And we need people to, uh, we need engineers to help, and we need program managers and project managers to get those engineers to do the job. So, yes, absolutely. Paul? Absolutely. Uh, over the next uh, 10 years, the U.S. Uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, anticipates a 13% growth in healthcare related occupations, which is far higher than most other industries. So um, we're just going to need more and more help. So a lot of opportunity. And Patrick? Uh, more opportunity than I could quantify. Yes. <laughs> all right. So you, you heard from all of our panelists that all of their industries are growing pretty significantly. That, uh, that concludes our prepared questions. We have Matt, Erica, and Eileen helping with the questions in the Q&A window. Again, if you'd like to submit a question, please do so now, and we will do our best to get to all the questions. Otherwise, I'll pass it back over to Artie to introduce our next speaker. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. Uh, and thank you to all of our panelists. That was a wonderful, amazing, amazing job, James. Um, now we would like to go ahead and introduce our representative, from Grossmont Adult Education, Veronica. Thank you, Artie. Good evening and welcome to everyone who's joining us. So as Artie mentioned, my name is Veronica Romero Murillo and I am the counselor uh, here at Grossmont Adult Education. I'm going to go over some of our medical and non-medical career training programs. Uh, we have a location over in Santee, which is our Health Occupation Center or HOC as you may um, some people may refer to it as that. Uh, we have all of our medical career training programs there. So I won't go over, I won't read all of them, but some of them include our certified nursing assistant program, our licensed vocational nursing program, uh, medical assistant, pharmacy technician, phlebotomy assistant, and dental assistant. Our classrooms are updated with the latest technology. Uh, we offer open houses throughout the year and uh, our students and uh, potential students, parents, community can uh, look at our location and, and absolutely it has the latest technology uh, in each of our programs. Uh, within these programs as well, we offer uh, what we call embedded literacy support. So which means that our students are receiving one-on-one -on -one support uh, with English and vocational literacy. So um, through our health, our Foothills Adult School location, uh, we offer a human resources and finance fundamentals course that also offers the embedded literacy support. So again, that one-on-one -on -one support, um, getting you, uh, you know, improving your English skills as, as well as your vocational um, literacy within the occupation itself. Um, at, through the, at the same time, it is also one of our earn and learn classes. And what this means is through this earn and learn uh, program, our students at, are employed at the same time that they are completing their program. So they're receiving the train, training at the same time that they are receiving um, 
you know, they're hired through the company that, that we work with. Other programs that we offer at Fo Foothills are our office professional training, our typing certificates. Uh, we also offer QuickBooks, accounting, and real estate. And then uh, we offer three additional earn, earn and learn programs. They are our culinary arts uh, program, the foot handler certification program, and the construction and maritime industry repair. So we partner with various employers uh, throughout our community and throughout San Diego County. And again, it gives our students the opportunity to train at the same time they are, that they are employed. So for example, through our culinary arts program, we partner with Viejas Casino. So our students are working at Viejas, receiving the training in the culinary arts field at Viejas. Uh, once they finish the program and they're finished with their training, they continue to be employed by Viejas Casino, uh, but they are promoted and then they also start earning a higher salary again with the, after the completion of their program. And then I'll just finish off by mentioning that we uh, also offer other programs such as our welding certification programs, our commercial driver license, so class B training programs, and our concrete mixer truck training program. Thank you so much, Veronica. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and pass it over to Amber Hughes from Gross Mount Cuyamaca Community College District. Hi, I'm Amber Hughes with our Grossmont Quimaca College Promise Program. I have the exciting opportunity to share with you um, free college. So free, I love that focus. Um, one of the things that I'm proud to offer and share with you as the Promise Coordinator is at Grossmont and Quimaca Colleges, we offer two years of free tuition and mandatory fees. So in that, one of the things that our Promise program focuses different than some other Promise programs is that there's no application, there's no income requirements, it's for all California residents, all ages, and all courses. So we certainly want to make sure that you and your students are aware of this, especially as we're looking at that career ed focus, the fact that you can go through these programs and receive free tuition and mandatory fees. Um, it's for the fall and spring semesters at Gross Monaquia Maca. The first semester of attendance, students um, only need to complete the four requirements before the semester starts. So that's a new student orientation that's done online in WebAdvisor very quick. Um, a first semester education plan. So we wanna make sure that our students come in and make sure they know what their focus is, what courses to take so that they can come in and they can leave um, only taking those classes that they need. Um, a state requirement is that students do need to complete a financial aid application. So that's either the FAFSA or the California DREAM Act. Um, it is a state requirement, so we want to make sure that students and parents realize that it's required, but um, students do not need to be eligible for financial aid. It just needs to be submitted. And our Promise program is for full-time students. So that's a, um, 12 units. We do have accommodation for disability students that meet with counselors and that would be full-time at six units. So free tuition, mandatory fees, no application, no income, no requirements. I, I mean, no um, restrictions as far as ages or courses. Um, the key for me is to make sure that you know how that's paid. Um, we do have to wait till after the semester starts in order to, to um, determine students are eligible for that full-time aspect. So students that are new do not have to pay at registration. Our number one question is, when is the promise going to pay? So it is after the deadline. So students will be notified about three or four weeks after the semester starts regarding their eligibility. So we do um, code our students so that they can attend classes will not be dropped for non-payment. And in that, the promise would then waive those tuition and mandatory fees. There is the option if students choose to pay to have those fees reimbursed, but it is that delay in that. Um, it does not include summer, but students that do take courses in the summer are still considered eligible um, for our promise. So we're excited to be able to share that with you. This partnership with Grossmont Union High School is phenomenal. Um, and partnering with Career Ed is so important. So um, check us out, our website, uh, I think it's at the bottom. If you go into gcc.edu, 
um, it's going to be under promise. And so check it out on our district website, as well as our Grosvenor Cuyamaca colleges. So thank you so much for the time. I hope you come see us, not just because it's free, but because we have phenomenal um, educational programs, instruction, and check out our campus, a lot going on. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you, Amber. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Charlene Oswald from Queen Mac College. Hi all, thank you for attending this evening. I am Charlene Oswald, I'm the Program Manager for Queen Mac College's Career Education Programs. I'd like to begin by encouraging you to either scan or take a photograph of the QR code in the middle of this slide, which will take you to our website where you can learn more about our programs in detail because I'm going to give a very high level overview tonight. Both Cuyamaca and Grossmont offer distinct career education programs, some of which are aligned to the high school pathways. So it's really important to look at the pathway that your child might be on and then match it up to which program might be available for continued education at one of the community colleges. Tonight, I'm going to highlight a few of the programs specific to our campus here at Cuyamaca. Our environmental career pathways are at the front line of public health and environmental protection. They include our environmental health and safety degree programs and certificates, water studies, and horticulture. Environmental careers um, are expected to have a 5% projected job growth over the next five years. And many students who choose this pathway obtain entry-level employment in the field within two semesters of attending college with us because they'll get the certifications or entry-level skills that they'll need to start in employment right away. Our implied technology programs include our award-winning um, automotive program, which has General Motors and Ford sponsors trainings, as well, as well as hybrid and electrical engineering. A lot of engineering majors actually move over into automotive because of the world that is changing with our, our cars these days and our electric vehicles. For students interested in construction and utilities and manufacturing trades, we have certificate and degree programs in surveying, civil, mechanical, and aerospace engineering, as well as CAD and advanced manufacturing. And we also have multiple certificate and degree options in computer and information sciences, including cybersecurity. And we do have an ethical hacking club here at Cuyamaca. Um, so that is a very high over level of our programs, but I do encourage you to, again, scan that QR code and check out our website for more information, including videos from our students with testimonials. Now I'd like to turn the floor over to my colleague, Erica, from Grossmont College. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Charlene. Uh, my name is Erica Ramirez Shadman. I'm the CTA program manager at Grossmont College. And so um, we are part of the Division of Career Education and Workforce Development. And uh, we have several programs to offer um, within our college system, um, both short term programs where a student can just earn a certificate, um, skill building um, within a year, earn certificates, or receive their associate degree. Um, at, at Grossmont College. And so we have administration of justice with uh, several specializations in corrections, in forensic technology, in law enforcement, and security management. We have our business office technology, which offers a lot of the administrative and um, executive assistant positions and certificates. Um, we also offer here, not listed, but um, part of our BOT is our office professional training, which is a semester of um, office training with job placement assistance. And this is a program that is no cost to students and it's uh, solely grant funded. Uh, we do have all of our business general and our business administration and management degrees as well as our child development education and family studies, which we offer associate degrees in associate teacher and child development master teacher. And so we also have our computer science and information systems, uh, similar to Cuyamaca, um, just a few of uh, different focuses. Uh, we have the computer programming, information technology technician, programmable logic controller. We have data science, networking and cybersecurity tech, and one of our newest programs, um, which are non-credit courses. The first at Grossman College is our drone technology. So a student can earn um, and study to take their FAA 107 tests and then uh, receive flight hours on site um, at Grossman. 
So we also offer our culinary arts with a banquet line pastry and prep cook and our culinary entrepreneurship program. And lastly, um, we do have our marketing management and international business um, with the marketing degrees management uh, retail, as well as um, our newest um, degree now is global trade and logistics program. So we're now offering um, supply chain and transportation degrees at Grow Smart. Um, and just as Kuyamaka College, we also have a QR code. I encourage everybody to um, take a picture of, of that code that links you directly to our career technical education site. Um, with all of our programs, we do offer um, additional resources and services, uh, such as a work-based work learning, where we help support students with paid and non-paid internships, uh, further career exploration, um, meeting with mentors, meeting with industry professionals, and a lot of employment, employment engagement activities throughout the year. Um, so if anybody would like some more information, um, please reach out to me on my email, or you can directly go on the website for, for more information. So thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Erica. What an amazing group of panelists and speakers this evening. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take some time to address any outstanding questions from the Q&A box. Um, so Eileen, Matt, do we have any outstanding questions from our Q&A? We do not have any outstanding questions, but I would like to apologize for those of you needing the Arabic translation. We are having technical difficulties with that. We are recording this um, webinar and we will get it translated and send it out to everyone so that they will have the translation. Thank you so much, Eileen. So let's go ahead and move on to our next slide here, which is our upcoming events. Um, I do wanna go ahead and just point out uh, that the Grossmont Union High School District is going to be um, hosting a career technical education fair. Uh, this will be held over at Grossmont Center on January 28, 2023 uh, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we, highly, uh, we highly encourage you all to come out and visit us that, that uh, morning. And um, we are gonna be inviting our community co college partners as well. Um, so that if you had any questions from this evening, I'm sure that we will have someone there to be able to help answer any of those questions. Um, the other event that we have is a Women in STEM Career Fair and Industry Panel uh, that we hope to host on February 2nd um, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, the actual location is still to be determined, um, whether that'll be in Zoom um, or in person. All right, Eileen. I would like to thank everyone for attending tonight. Um, as Ari said, this is the first in our webinar series and for this year, and we've had a lot of um, people attend and we really appreciate that. I would like to thank James Sly for being such a great moderator and all of our panelists for sharing their experience with our families. And I hope that you guys can come out and check out our programs and come to the career fair, the CT fair in January, and hopefully we can answer your questions. If you have any other questions that you might want um, any of the panelists to answer and you think about it later, please feel free to email us. Um, I'm at erizzo at guhse.net and I will direct those questions to the appropriate people. So thank you very much and we hope to see you in our program soon.